Hi. Well, here's where we left off, a sword that was marginally tempered and in need of a guard and handles. And this guy thought that would be easy, no problemo. We'll zip zap through that. It's practically going to make itself from here on. Uh, as you can tell, it's been two weeks <laughs> since the last video. It took forever. Needless to say, there were some issues. We'll go into that. But first, we got to get the uh, tank straight. So I'm going to clamp it up and see if we can't pull it back into line. And since I'm running colors, I'm just going to do another tempering cycle all the way up the sword here. These tempering cycles are barely adequate. You know, they're not, they're not long. They're not an hour long, which probably is a minimum for this type of steel. They're not very consistent, although here you can see I got a little more even distribution of the colors than in the past. And, you know, it's pretty marginal. Marginal heat treat, but acceptable. It still skates this 50 HRC file all up and down. So I have no doubt that it's not a completely uniform heat uh, temper cycle, and it's not a good temper cycle, but I suspect it's adequate. We're still at two pounds, five ounces, and right about 31 inches. I really want the final weight to be under three pounds, and the garden handle are gonna be sorta heavy. So I'm going to knock off an inch. I know we were aiming for a 31 inch sword, but I'm going to take an inch off and, and apply a taper and see if I can't get the weight down a little bit more. 30 inches is still plenty acceptable for an oak shot 18A, which is what we're aiming for. All right, let's make that guard. This is some steel I had laying around. This is a, a farrier rasp. Uh, round file, half round file. And you see those railroad spikes. We're going to get these cleaned up in vinegar, get some of that rust off, cut them to the shape we need, and then forge weld them together. This is the fair rasp in the file. So you notice that the fair rasp and file are high carbon steel, and if we were to etch them, they'd etch fairly dark. The railroad spikes are mild steel. If we etch them, they will etch fairly, yep, yep, something fell off the anvil. No need to point it out, it happens every week. They'll etch rather lightly, they're mild steel. So, when I forge weld these together, I'm going to try to put them together in such a way that if I twist them subsequently, they might form a pretty cool pattern etched. I just have to figure out how to stack them together. This is a piece of 1070, another piece of high carbon steel. It sort of evens out the block. We'll put some uh, nickel sheet in between them all. That will etch very brightly. Try to get this all forge weld together, twist it up, and we might have a pretty decent pattern. So you saw me applying flux and then hitting it with a hammer and we're slowly getting it welded together and drawn out. Pretty soon we'll start rounding the corners a little bit and then I'll take it over to the vise and we'll twist it. This is quite a bit harder than I expected. <laughs> it's a little thicker than anything I've twisted before. And uh, I really had to get it hot and crank on it. Um, once you get it going, it tends to keep going, but 
Um, I could not put as many twists in here as I really wanted to, so I'm sort of hoping that this will look decent with a pretty low twist rate or a moderate amount of twists. We're going to flux up the exterior and try to hammer it square. Keep things forge welded as best we can. This is an example of an 18A sword. This is Albrecht II's sword. It's about a 35 inch blade and if we do some calculations based on some measurements I take off the screen we basically get that the width of the guard uh, is about half an inch. Right, right about there it's half an inch. And I, I don't know what it is at the tips, but and then the length of the guard from end to end is about six and a half inches. So this is our piece of steel. Right now it's plenty big to do all that with. When it's ground down and etched, we get the candy cane pattern. Hey, great. Um, I guess that's about what I expected with that twist rate, but I'm going to twist it again because I'm not really happy with that. It's pretty narrow at this point in time, so twisting it here definitely means I'm going to have to cut it and forge weld it back on itself. It's just too thin to make a, a sword guard out of, even one that's only half an inch uh, tall. As you can see, I'm being a lot more aggressive with the twist. Cut it into three pieces. The middle piece was just no good. You can see it here. Some of the twists were a little bit deep and it started to laminate and didn't get welded all back together. So I'm not going to be able to use that piece. It leaves me a little less material than I was hoping for. That's going to be pretty tricky to make something out of. Well, that's the pattern. It's a little bit cooler, isn't it? So I'm going to put a piece of uh, high carbon steel in between it to add some mass. And I got some nickel sheet in between that. So that'll just give us sort of another, another layer to this pattern. There's nothing like cutting it close. <laughs> I mean, this is barely enough mass for a sword guard. And I'm not really leaving myself a lot of wiggle room. So the guard for the Albert the second sword is a small guard. And a lot of the examples I looked at for the 18A swords, they're not all that big. Some of them are a little bit elaborate. Some They have some patterns in them. They tend to have sort of modest sized guards, I guess. I don't know if that's a characteristic of 18A or not, but a smallish appearing guard seems to be uh, okay. I'm going to drift a hole in the middle with this uh, sword shaped punch that I made. This It's made out of A2 steel. It's just sort of what I had laying around. So I'm going to use it. So that's what it is so far. This little spacer is going to go between the guard and the handle. Our guard's fairly narrow, you might have noticed, and probably a little too narrow to start a handle from directly. So we're going to put this in between the guard and the handle to give us a slightly bigger handle and uh, more material to work with in that regard.
Well, pretty cool. That's about the right size and shape, I think, based on the measurements I got off the computer screen. But there's a problem. There's quite a bit of space in between the sword and the guard. I can clean that up a little bit, make it a little more symmetric from side to side, which is what I'm going to do here. And that's what it looks like, all etched up and on the sword. I think it's pretty neat. It's a good story. You know, it's uh, files and railroad spikes, but that space there really bothers me. I can fill that with some silver solder or, you know, JB Weld, but it's just going to look awkward to me. I know it's there and I'm going to be looking at it all the time. So I'm going to make another guard. This is just two pieces of mild steel on either side of a center stripe of 1070. If I decide to twist it and things are going well, I can twist it and there'll be a little bit of a pattern in there. If I don't do anything with it, um, no one will be the wiser. So let's try this again. Pretty solid weld. We've got a little area in the middle marked out to help our drift stay straight, or at least that's the plan. It doesn't really work all that well, but in the end I get it drifted and we're A-OK. -okay. You can really get to chasing your tail with the guard. You can get the hole drifted, then you get it fitted to the sword. And then by the time you do all that, the shape has changed. And then so you go back, hammer the shape a little more, grind it a little more, and the guard doesn't quite fit right. And then you, you just, just sort of back and forth. I haven't really figured that process out yet, but I'm sure with some practice I'll, I can get it down. You also sort of go through more heat cycles every time you, you grind it more to shape and clean it up a little bit and then you have to go back and refit it and then you have to heat it to do that and then that's more scale then you have to go back and grind it and sand it and then you, uh, it's just sort of it's you know <laughs> it's one of those processes I just have not figured out but other people do they tend to it seems like get it get it pretty well nailed down you don't spend near as much time as I did Try to hammer it on it from the sides a little more than I did the last one and really try to tighten up that fit. What you notice is that as I use the drift, one side bows out more than the other. And it sort of skews things a little bit. So I've quenched that side, well, cooled it, and then tried to put the drift in to see if it would uh, equally bow out the other side so things would look a little more symmetric. It does to some degree, but basically I have to go back and grind that other side, which is a little wider. Uh, grind it down and then apply the drift and things even out pretty well at that point. So this is going to be a much cleaner fit. It's not tightened down all the way, but it will be. When the guard cools off, it won't go on as much. The metal contracts, so you can't push it on as far when the, when the metal's cold as you can when it's hot. So I'll heat it up with a torch and force it back down all the way. The fit will be much tighter. The guard's a bit bigger. What do you guys think? Which one do you like? I sort of like the, the look of this one a little better. I like the fit being a little tighter. But the story's not nearly as compelling as the one on the right, the first one. I mean, it's railroad spikes, some old files, and it's got a twist pattern. Hey, shout out below. Which one do you like? Which one needs to go on this sword? Let me know what you think.